Hey, what's going on guys? Matt back here with another tutorial and today we're going to be looking at authoritative servers. So this is just going to be setting up quite a simple server just to get two or more players into the scene that can control their own players via the server rather than telling everybody everything all the time, which I've done another series of tutorials on. If you'd like to have a look at that one, I'll put a link in the description. So looking into the script, I've got two scripts on the scene at the moment. One's just the movement one and the other one's the network manager. In the scene itself, I've just got the floor object, a directional light and an object that I've called network manager. And that's just got a script and a network view on it. Uh, I'll go through this, what the, the objects are in the project uh, in a minute. First off, we'll have a look at the scripts for you. So, the variables that I've got in here, we've got a uh, public transform of player, so that's just going to be the player object that we've got as a prefab. I've got a string, which is just the unique name of our game, basically, so that, that because we're using the Unity servers, we need a completely unique name for people to be able to find any servers within that game on the Unity servers. And then we've got a float of a ref refresh request length, and that's basically when we're searching for other servers, we want to just have a bit of time where it just refreshes the loop. We've then got our host data which is all of the different hosts that once we've gone through that loop we're going to find and then we've got our the public string of our chosen game name and that's just the name that we've chosen to call our game if we're creating a server and we can name that something completely unique it's just a way for our friends to be able to find us. You can also add comments and things like that later on but just for the simple setup I've only got this bit here uh, and then we've got the uh, network player of my player and that's basically once we've joined the server, we're going to store our, ourselves so we can tell the server who we are, if we're a client, that is. So uh, within this, we've got kind of a few bits, but what I'll do is I'll start on the GUI. So I've got it showing here where we basically just got a the name that we're going to call our server if we're going to create one. Otherwise, we click this to find a server. It'll come up with a list of the servers that are available. So on the GUI, we've basically got if we are a client or we're or we are the server then we're just going to return so we're just going to avoid it going through anything else because we're already in a game so we don't need to see any of this otherwise just to be able to display a little game name bit here so we know what to type in there if the chosen game name hasn't been given a name yet then we're just going to display this little bit here which is GUI label that is just in the location on the screen that I've chosen uh, here and that's just got the words game name there and then that will disappear the minute we've typed anything into this text field, uh, which is access, which accesses the chosen game name that I mentioned at the top. And that is just a text field that is at the same position as this label here. And it's just got a length of 25 as well. And then we've got, if we press the button of start server, start a new server, then it will create a new server and it will use the game name that we chose initially. Otherwise, we can obviously press the uh, find servers button. And what that'll do is start a coroutine of a fresh host list and I'll talk through both of those functions in a second. And then also on the GUI, we've got if the host data, which we stored at the top, which is all of the hosts that we find throughout this refresh host list function, is going to add them to a list of the games that we found. And then we can obviously access them. Once they appear on the screen, they'll appear down here. And we can join games by clicking on that button. And it'll say network connect that specific network. And then it'll trigger another event in a second. So. If we press the start server button, then we're going to do network dot initialize server. I've got 16 players within the game. At the moment, I've got it just set to random range, which is this is the port number. So you create a port number for it, but um, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I've got it set to random, so you can create more than one server on your own computer uh, just for testing purposes. And then we've got a uh, we don't want the network to have pu have a public address. Basically, you could also call this one false. Um, I just like to call it that because then I know what it means. After that, we've got master server register host. And then we do the registered game name, which is the uh, unique name that we've got from up here, which which has to match everyone that's going to create a server has to have the same one as that for this game. So they'll all come up and anybody that searches a server needs to use that same string. And then we've got the chosen game name that we typed in just here, just on the game name part there. And then that's going to initialize a server. And by initializing the server, we we then have a built in function that is on server initialize and then if we're just checking this is just kind of a backup if we are the server then we're going to do my player which is the network player and that's going to equal the network player that we are because we are the server so we're going to store our store our own network player and then we're going to call a function um, which is actually an rpc but we only need to call it on ourselves so we're going to call make player and then we're going to send 
the player that we are, which is our network player. Otherwise, we've connected to a server by joining it using the button here. So we've connected network connected there. And on connect unconnected to server is what all clients will call on their own version of the network manager that will also store my player the same as we did with the server and we will then network our PC just to the server our own network player object and we're just going to call that one make player as we put that in inverted commas for make player so the RPC of make player has the network player that we got sent I've called it this player and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a we're going to network instantiate the player on our position and our rotation and that's going to be of network view group zero to be honest you can you could start grouping things if you wanted but you can change that later on if you need we're going to say we're going to store that as a transform over here and we're going to call that new player and then if uh, the player doesn't equal my play, if this player doesn't equal my player so basically if we are a client then we're going to then network our pc to the, the specific player and we're going to send the view id of that player that we've just created and we're going to send that to enable camera which is an rpc just here um, otherwise we are the server so we're going to just call that function normally because we don't need to send it to the server and we only need to send it to ourselves because we're, we're sending it to ourselves because we first called it for ourselves so this RPC is getting the player ID that we sent through. So we've got our player, player ID as a network view ID. We're going to store an array of game objects, which are the players. And we're going to add to the players. We're going to say the game objects dot find game objects with tag player. So in this, in the project panel, we're going to tag the player prefab as player. And then we're going to do for each of the players that we've got in the scene. We're going to call it this player now for now, because we don't need to use the this player from up there. So we're going to say this player. And then if the player's network view ID is the same as the one that was sent through, uh, we, we're, gonna, we're trying to find the object that we created, although you can't send through transforms or game objects to our PCs. So we had to do it via the view IDs because the view IDs are completely unique to each object that has a view ID. But it, that ID is the same across all users on the server. Inside that, we've got if if that one's equal to that then we're going to say this player dot get component movement dot have control is true so that's within the movement script we've got a boolean in there of have control we've then also got the transform my camera equals this player's transform to find camera so basically we're going to find the child which is a camera which is attached to the player that we've created we're going to store that as my camera and then we're going to say my camera dot camera enabled is true and my camera dot camera dot get component audio listener is true so they can then hear sounds and they can they're basically viewing through that camera they're viewing the entire game through that camera and that's the way that the authoritative servers work Finally, I'm just going to go through the refresh host list, which is the bit that we call uh, when we find servers. So we're going to say master server request host list, the name of the get of the reg of the whole game, which is the one we stored up here, the unique name. We've then got a float of time end, which is just the time dot time plus the length that we added at the top, which I've got float of three. And then we're going to say while time dot time is less than the time end that we've got here, then we're just going to pull the host list and store it as host data and then we're going to yield um, just to the end of the frame and then we're going to do it again and basically that's just to make sure that we're going to store all of the hosts that are in the, that we that we can find on the host list so that's covering over the network manager i hope that kind of makes sense i'm going to move on to the movement script so the movement script we've got a integer of movement speed which is eight a float of horizontal which is it starts off as zero, a float of vertical which starts off as zero, and then that public boolean that is have control and starts off as false. So within fixed update, because it's it uses physics, I'm gonna want to do it within fixed update. If have control, so basically the minute we get told we've got control, we're able to affect the player and what that's gonna do we're told that we have control because we are the player that requested to be created basically and then we have control over the specific one that was created for us and only we have control over that but the control that we have we actually have to request from the server because it's authoritative so inside that we've just got the normal movement script that i have which is uh, velocity changes so we've got vertical equals input get axis vertical uh horizons is get, get axis horizontal We've then got a vector three of new velocity, which is transform right multiplied by 
horizontal multiply by move speed plus transform forward multiply by vertical multiply by move speed so basically the move speed and the amount that we press the, the whether we're pressing forwards or backwards and the amount that we're pressing forwards or backwards will change this bit and then the same with the horizontal as well and then my velocity is equal to the rigid body velocity that we start with and then we affect the parts of that variable so we're going to go my velocity x is equal to new velocity x and my velocity z is equal to new velocity z so the y is always only affected by gravity and um anything that's kind of adding forces to push it upwards or whatever but the x and z are affected by us pressing buttons then we're going to say if my velocity doesn't equal the velocity that we are already going at we're going to ask the server to, to move us and the way we're going to do that is we're going to go if network dot is server so basically if we're the server that is requesting all of this then we're just going to call the function itself by move player and then we're going to send through my velocity which is the variable we have we have affected otherwise uh, we're a client and so we're going to network view rpc to the server the velocity and we're going to call that one move player and then that rpc is going to be void move player uh, vector three so the the uh, velocity that we've worked out and we're going to say the rigid body velocity is then equal to the velocity that we get got sent through and because this rpc is on the script attached to the specific object that's requesting this that's all you actually have to do in the sense of being able to move it on the server side so the servers the client has now requested to be moved based on physics and the server has moved themselves based on has moved that object based on physics on their view and then they just need to send a, another rpc to everybody else to say this is the new position so all we have to do is send the rpc saying transform position just to others buffered because the server's already done it physically so if it's the server that requested the movement then the server can do it straight away otherwise the all the clients are going to be told what the position of that object is now and they're going to send it through this update player rpc and they're going to say vector three player position that we sent through as a transform position and then transform position is equal to player position on all of the clients and not the server so inside the scene what we basically got is the floor is just a cube with collider on it directional lights just there just so you can see a little bit better the network manager object is just an empty that has the network manager script attached to it as well as a network view that's not observing anything but it's got the state synchronization set to reliable delta compressed we've then got as a prefab we've got the player object which is just a cube with a camera attached uh, the camera's got the ca its its camera and the audio listener turned off at default, and the player has got the tag of player, and then that player's got it's got its box collider, it's got a rigid body, and it's uh, got its rotations frozen, and then we've got the movement script attached to that, and a network view that has date synchronization turned off because it's being told by the server what to do. It doesn't need to watch anything. And so if I just do a quick build and run, create the server here, and I'll just call it 55 it doesn't really matter the server's object is added and they can move around so if I move just to the edge and then I'll find servers on here we found server 55 so we'll join it and then on the client side you can see if I move towards the server I can move around and on the server side here it is being updated um, just as a quick mention actually when you're building you need to go into player settings in the build settings and tick run in background to be able to view it in the background. Um, I also turn default uh, is full screen to off just so you're able to see it easier as well. So if I brick come back into here, I can actually physically move the server as well by walking into them here. And then the server, if I move them, I can push them both backwards. And then on the client side, that is also moving as well. And they're both matching up. Um, so I hope that's useful to get into authoritative servers. Basically, you can just build upon this whole move, the way that the movement script is done. And you could do that with animations. You could do that with the rotations as well, which you're going to have to do for physics. And then you can do it for anything that's going to be happening within the game. You basically send it through the RPC specifically to the server. And then the server updates itself. And then it tells all the, cl all the other clients to basically watch what's going on. So it'll say uh, you'll send through any positions of any objects that are moved or any change in states for anything. You'll send it through an RPC back to the others buffered. So it'll send it to all players and all new players that join the game will be able to see any updates that's happened. So I hope that's useful for you and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.